Hi guys, I'm Professor Massaro and I'm going to show you how to spec or measure a basic garment t-shirt from Old Navy. Don't forget that specs are a crucial part of the product development process, not only for the aesthetic of the garment, but for the fit of the garment, which as we know are really important to the sale of the garment. Think about how an ill-fitting t-shirt or an ill-fitting garment, um, you could lose a sale when you take that garment into the fitting room and try it on. And more importantly, when you take it home, if you buy it from an online website and try it on, you know, in front of your mirror in your bedroom, how you return it um, if it's ill-fitting. So the specs and therefore the fit of the garment are crucial. This is a basic um, short sleeve t-shirt from Old Navy. This is a key item for Old Navy. It's not a fashion item. It's something that they would have as item of the week piled up on the table when you walk into the front of the store in every color and in every size. It's the most simple thing to spec. When you spec, everybody in um, the fashion merchandising major um, should own um, a 99 cent tape measure. It's a great investment that you'll have for now throughout the rest of your product development career. Um, so when you spec, lay the garment flat with the front facing you. Don't stretch it, don't move it around too much. I'm going to do all my specifications on the flat. However, there are some points of measurement on this garment that are really circumference measurements. And just think about any point on a garment that goes around the body, like your chest goes around the body, the bottom opening goes around the body. Those are circumference measurements, but I'm going to take those specifications or measurements on the flat. Okay, so whenever I take my measurements, I have my spec sheet in front of me be it in the web PDM system or be it in Excel. That way I can constantly refer to my points of measurements and my tolerance at the same time. The first spec that I'm gonna take here is the front length from high point shoulder. The acronym for high point shoulder is always HPS. Every company you go to, they're gonna say HPS, HPS. Most of our measurements are taken from high point shoulder, HPS. This is the high point shoulder. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to line my t-shirt up at a straight edge or the edge of my desk so it gives me a little better reference for what the high point shoulder is. And I line my measurement up at the high, my measuring tape up at the high point shoulder and I go to the bottom of the garment and that is my front length from high point shoulder. The next spec I'm going to take is the chest measurement. The chest measurement is a circumference measurement. Generally, knit specs such as this are taken on the flat and woven specs are taken on the circumference, so I'm going to take this one on the flat. The chest measurement is usually taken at a point one inch from the armhole. So I'm going to go one inch from the armhole here, and since I'm taking this on the flat, I'm going to go right across, okay? I get 17 inches, so this is a 17 inch flat chest measurement, and if I needed to make a circumference, I would double that to a 35 inch circumference measurement. The next spec I'm going to take is going to be a cross shoulder. That's not a circumference measurement. By the word across, I mean a cross shoulder, and that's from shoulder point to shoulder point, not high shoulder point, but shoulder point, shoulder seam to shoulder seam, and I go right across the garment. The next spec I'm going to take is going to be bottom opening or sweep. Also, a really important point of measurement or um, spec for the garment um, because this is how it's going to fit over the body, how it's going to get over your head, and how it's going to fit on the body. Okay, so I'm going to go from side seam to side seam at the bottom opening. Okay, I get 17 inches. Again, this is our circumference point of measurement. So if I would need to give a circumference rather than a flat measurement, I would just double that at 17 and 17 is a 34 inch bottom opening or sweep. The next point of measurement I'm gonna show you is the front neck drop. This is really important. Front neck drop is always taken um, from the high point shoulder, okay? Not from the back neck drop, but from the high point shoulder. So a very easy way of doing this is lining your high point shoulder up at the edge of the desk or perhaps a straight edge if you want, okay? And so that way I can take my front neck drop spec, spec or measurement right from that high point shoulder right to the front neck drop. Here I'm getting eight inches, also a really crucial point of measurement for this garment because if somebody tries this on and their bra shows on this deep v-neck or if too much cleavage shows, they're not gonna buy the garment or if they do buy it, they're going to return the garment. So that's a really important point of measurement and specification not only for the aesthetic and the style of the garment, but for the fit of the garment. 
back neck drop is also always taken from the high point shoulder. So again, I line my high point shoulder up at the edge of the desk, okay? So my back neck drop is taken from my high point shoulder. Here I get a little bit under one inch, seven eighth of an inch. Most companies are really particular with specifications. So you don't round up and you don't round under. You give the exact measurement to the eighth and sometimes to the sixteenth of an inch. Next, I'm gonna take the uh, neck width, right? I'm not doing a neck circumference since this is a really basic flat knit. I'm doing the neck width, right? Which again, is from high point shoulder to high point shoulder, but the neck opening, right? And here, I get six and three quarters, six and three quarters neck opening. This is also really crucial too, how this garment is gonna get over the person's head. Are they gonna be, be able to fit it over a hairdo? Are they gonna be able to fit it over their body and get it on their neck, okay? The next spec I'm gonna take is the sleeve length. The sleeve length is almost always taken from the center back neck. Sometimes we abbreviate that to be CBN, center back, right? So I can sort of estimate where the center back neck is by folding this garment in half, right? Sometimes I might wanna put a little pin there. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna eyeball where the center back neck is. And notice what I'm doing, okay? I am following the contour, not going straight down like this, okay? I am following the contour of the neck the shoulder, and all the way down to the sleeve length. This happens to be a really easy one. It's a short sleeve. If it were a long sleeve, I would follow the contour all the way down to the long sleeve of the garment. Um, very rarely is the sleeve length taken from the seam of the sleeve at the shoulder. It's almost always taken from the center back neck, so basically it, it encompasses part of the neck opening, the shoulder, and the sleeve length itself. Okay, the sleeve opening, sometimes referred to as cuff width, right? Also our circumference measurement, okay, but I'm going to take it on the flat. And I just basically measure the sleeve opening, also a really important measurement, okay? Here I'm getting six inches. If I had to convert this to a circumference, of course I would say 12 inches. Now on this particular shirt, there's no muscle because it's a short sleeve shirt. However, if it were a long sleeve shirt, I might want to take a, a speck of the muscle, and the muscle is usually taken at one inch below the armhole. So if I needed to give a muscle speck, I would take a speck at one inch below, below the armhole so I could sort of see how the sleeve progresses from the actual armhole curve to the muscle to the bottom opening. Speaking of the armhole curve, also an important point of measurement, especially on a t-shirt, okay? The armhole here is on a curve. Sometimes on menswear, we don't have a curved armhole. We have a really straight armhole. Here it's curved. The armhole circumference is a circumference measurement because it goes around the body. So I'm gonna take from the top of the armhole. Notice that I am following the contour of this curve. Some companies don't do this, but I always do. I follow the contour of the curve to that joining seam. I get nine, so if I needed to give a circumference measurement on this garment, I would double that to 18 is my armhole circumference. Sometimes on your garment, you may have waist shape. In looking at this Old Navy t-shirt, I could see I do have some waist contour because I could see the chest does um, go out a little farther, the waist comes in, and then I have the bottom opening that goes out a little further. So what I might do for the chest measurement is figure out, or for the waist measurement, is figure out exactly where my waist is, right? And I might note that on my points of measurement. You could always fill in things on your own on your point of measurement. So I might say my waist, right, which is the smallest part on my side seam, is 14, 15 inches from high point shoulder. So I might write in my POM, waist 15 inches from HPS. And again, the waist is a circumference measurement. So that's something that goes around the garment, around your body. So here at 15 and a half inches, I would double that and I would have a 31 inch, a 31 inch waist. This is a really basic garment, okay? There is no ribbing at the bottom. There's no ribbing at the sleeves, but there is a rib band around the neckline. This rib band is important to the garment construction because that makes it easier for the wearer to get over the head. 
Imagine if there was nothing stretchy here with this sort of eight inch, you know, neck drop here. It would be hard for the person to get it over their head. So the ribbing makes it easier. I want to give a rib band height because that's important for the style and the aesthetic of the garment. So I measure exactly where the rib is. And here I get, it's a five eighth inch rib band. Very easy. Now in looking at this garment, pretty simple. I have all the hot points. I have all the important points of measurement. I have my chest, I have my length, I have my waist, I have my bottom opening, I have my sleeve opening, I have my sleeve length, my neck depth or my neck um, drop, my back neck drop. There's really nothing else I would be done. But many of you, um, when you're measuring garments, won't have something as simple. So you just have to use your logic, refer to a how to measure guide, um, and you might have to add in some points of measurement. For example, if you have a garment that has a peplum, all right, peplum is a hot item now and it continues to be a strong trend, okay? You definitely need to give your pattern maker and your factory an idea of how you want to split up the bodice and the peplum because that's an, an important style detail and it's a really important fit detail. So I might add in on my spec sheet an actual point of measurement and you can write it in and I might say length from high point shoulder to peplum seam or bodice length from high point shoulder to peplum seam. Then I might say pep peplum length from bodice seam so that you're giving a true, um, you know, point of measurement and a true specification for this garment um, that has a peplum. Some of your garments may have insets. I don't know if you can notice this, but this, this a garment has this faux leather quilted inset and then these little side insets that are ponting it. So you may want to give your pattern maker a measurement for the faux leather inset so they know what proportion you want for faux leather versus the ponting it. Any detail that you can give your pattern maker really helps them to distinguish how you want this garment to look and how you want this garment to fit. Um, many times you just don't want to leave it to the factory or to your pattern maker's imagination or to their judgment how you want this thing to look. So the more information you give them, the more, the better garment you get, um, the better sample you get back, back um, looking the way you want it to look. Another important point, important point of measurement, all right, before we conclude, is a collar, okay? There's no collar on this. Yes, there's a rib band, there's no collar on this. But if your top has a collar, okay, you definitely want to measure that collar from the joining seam to the edge of the collar. The collar is not a circumference measurement. Usually we refer to it as collar height. So that gives um, a great idea of how big you want this, gar this collar to be. The collar is less of a fit issue and is more of an aesthetic issue for the garment. So hopefully by now you have a great idea of all the different points of measurements on a basic t-shirt, on a basic top, and you'll be able to generate a very professional and, a, and um, a, a good working spec that somebody can use. And if they read the spec and look at your sketch, they'll bring you back a garment that looks like this and hopefully fits. Thank you.